Let's move on to ionic solids. What is the interparticular force for ionic solids? Once again, Coulomb's law comes into play. Ionic solids are composed of cations and anions, so opposite charges will attract. The interparticular force is known as an ionic bond, and it results in typically high melting points. How can the melting points become higher, which means the interparticular force becomes stronger? Well, we can have a larger numerator which means larger charges will result typically in a higher melting point for cations and anions. We can also use a smaller denominator. Smaller cations and anions typically have a higher melting point than larger ones because the distance between the center of the charges is closer. We can also have less shielding. Ionic solids do not break apart in air, but they do break apart in water, which shields more than vacuum. The bottom line here, stuff sticks good when it has large charge and is close together. Here are two unit cells for students to become familiar with, the sodium chloride and the cesium chloride unit structures. First, I'll go over the sodium chloride structure in detail. What we have here on the left is a picture where the ions are small, so we can see inside the unit cell. What we have here is a picture of the ions with their relative appropriate sizes, so students can see that we have larger ions on the corners and the faces, and smaller ions on the edges and in the center. The first question might be, which ion is which? It might help to look at the electron configurations for sodium 1 plus and chloride 1 minus. So let's visit a periodic table. We can see that sodium 1 plus must be isoelectronic with neon, and chloride 1 minus must be isoelectronic with argon. So in general, we would expect neon to be smaller than argon, and especially so because this would be neon but with the plus one charge, which would tend to make it smaller, and argon with a negative charge, which would tend to make it larger than a typical argon. I believe we can conclude that the blue in the picture is going to be the sodium one plus, and the yellow spheres will be the chloride ion. Now it's time to think about how this structure is put together. Let's look at the sodium first. What position is this blue sphere in a unit cell? I hope you have decided that is an edge site. How many atoms are within the unit cell for edge sites? Well, there should be 12 edge atoms, and each one is a quarter inside the unit cell, so that gives me three sodium ions. Let's move to chloride. What site is this yellow sphere occupying? I hope you came up with corner. So that would be eight corner atoms, each of which is one eighth inside the unit cell, so that is one chloride. What is this position in the unit cell? I hope you came up with face and that you recalled that there are six face sites in a unit cell, each of which is one half inside the unit cell volume, so that would give me three chlorides. So now if we look at our ratio, what do we come up with? Sodium three, chloride four. Does that make sense to you based upon what you know on the charges? Shouldn't the ratio be one to one stoichiometry? I think we've missed something. And what we've missed is there is an ion in the center. Maybe you can see it peeking out of this structure. So there is one more sodium ion in the center. When we take that into account, there is one sodium ion in the center, which is wholly within the unit cell, so that gives us one more sodium ion. Now our ratio is four sodium ions 
to four chloride ions, or when simplified as we know it, sodium chloride. There are other combinations of cations and anions that also pack in this structure. An example would be lithium fluoride. Maybe you're wondering, cesium chloride has a plus one and a minus one. Why does that cell structure look different? Well, let's think about the relative sizes. We will be looking at the periodic table for the electron configuration of cesium-1 plus and chloride-1 minus. Cesium-1 plus is going to be xenon, but a little bit smaller, and chloride-1 minus is going to be argon, but a little bit larger. Well, isn't a smaller xenon and a larger argon possibly kind of kryptonish? Yes, the cesium ion and the chloride anion are roughly the same size. That is why in this unit cell, both the red and the blue spheres seem to be roughly the same size. So we'll just pick one for cesium and one for chloride. Cesium will use this red sphere. So what site is that and how many atoms does that account for? I trust you remember that a corner has 8 times 1 8 giving us one cesium cation. And the blue one, we would call that site center. So that should be one in the center, wholly owned by the unit cell. So that'll give us one chloride ion. So the ratio is one cesium to one chloride, which is what Mother Nature intended. So here is your student question. Given the picture with cadmium on the corner and two iodide ions in the center, what is the ionic formula for this compound? And after you've done this for the unit cell, think about whether or not it makes sense given the charges on the ions. Here is another unit cell to analyze. There are eight fluorides in the center, calcium ions on the corners, and the faces. And once again, think about what makes sense ionically for this compound to be. For this one, please build your own unit cell to make a neutral compound between aluminum 3 plus and sulfide ion with a 2 minus charge. Choose one of two possible correct answers.